Hello and welcome to our worship from Central Swansea Ministry area. My name's Sarah and today is the first Sunday of Advent, the beginning of the church's year and a time for preparation. Let's take a moment in silence just to recognise that God is with us right where we are. And now let us pray the collect for Advent Sunday. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first reading is from St Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 13, reading verses 11 to 14. And do this, understanding the present time, the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over, the day is almost here, so let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension or jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel according to St Matthew. Chapter 24, reading verses 36 to 44. Jesus said, But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in a field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill, one will be taken and the other left. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time the time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, what are we waiting for? Back in October, I was in a shop waiting to be served and the assistant was chatting to the lady in front of me and said, are you all ready for Christmas? Christmas! It was still October. When I was in college, there was a heated discussion between those who wanted to put up the Christmas tree and those who felt it was far too early. Many five-year-olds can tell you exactly how many sleeps it is until Father Christmas does his rounds. And the children at the Christmas fair in Christchurch this week were excitedly telling Santa what they were hoping for. My sister-in-law decorated her house in early November and my mother-in-law has been watching Christmas films for weeks. I don't know which camp you're in, but ready or not, Christmas is coming. One question, what are we waiting for? When I was looking at today's readings, the headings in the New Testament reading, reading was an urgent appeal and the Gospels title was the necessity for watchfulness. The Apostle Paul's urgency reflected the belief that Jesus would return imminently. Salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. 
Christians have been anticipating Christ's return for almost 2,000 years. Perhaps we've lost some of our urgency. But as Paul said, Christ's return is closer than it's ever been. In our Gospel reading, Jesus urges us to be watchful because we don't know the exact time when he will return. We're busy preparing for Christmas, but if Jesus walked into our homes or into our churches this morning, would we be ready? In the past week, America has witnessed a pair of deadly shootings. Last Saturday, an attacker op opened fire in a nightclub in Colorado, killing five people. On Tuesday, a Walmart employee gunned down six of his co-workers and then turned the gun on himself in Virginia. We hear every day of people whose lives are suddenly cut short by illness or accident. I wonder if any of those people who have died woke up in the morning with any thought that that would be their last day, the day that they would meet their maker. What would they have done differently? What might they have said to their loved ones before they left home? I wonder whether we would live differently if we recognise that our days are numbered or if we knew the exact date of the second coming. Jesus related the end times to the days of Noah when people were carrying on as normal, oblivious. Does that sound familiar? Last Saturday evening, last Sunday evening, the Christmas lights were switched on in Swansea. Santa was there. And Sam led a carol service beforehand. Maybe it seemed a bit too early for some. After all, it wasn't even Advent then. And, but thinking about the familiar carols, I reflected on the fact that in the busyness of Christmas pre preparations and celebrations, this might be the only time that some people would hear anything of the real Christmas story. So what are we waiting for? In many ways, keeping Advent as a penitential season to prepare ourselves is a good thing. But the church can be a bit precious about Advent. There may be a tendency to superiority, thinking that we're doing it right. However, what better time of year is there to talk about Jesus, that he really did come to earth as a baby and that it isn't just a nice story. He lived and he died so that we could have relationship with God. People who don't usually darken the doorsteps of our churches will be visiting for carol services or christingles. We'll be welcoming families to the crib service. We have an opportunity which may not happen again. So what are we waiting for? People may visit our homes. People who never go to church and don't know the reason for the season. There are people who have no idea that God loves them or what Christmas is really all about. How will they know the good news of the gospel unless we tell them? So what are we waiting for? Paul says it's time for us to wake up and live honourably, to put on Christ. Jesus predicts that those who are not prepared will be left behind. Therefore, he says, you must be ready. This Advent season, may we use the time of preparation to examine ourselves and consider whether we are ready for when Jesus comes again or calls us home. May we live as those eagerly awaiting his coming not just as a baby in Bethlehem, but in his coming to establish his kingdom. May we welcome his presence with us now by his Holy Spirit and live in anticipation of his coming again in glory. Now is the time to start living out the words of the creed in what we believe and what we do. So what are we waiting for? Let us pray for our world, 
for the church and for each other. Lord Jesus Christ, at this time supposedly of goodwill among all, we pray for peace in our world, an end to division and discord, hatred and hostility, death and destruction. Prince of Peace, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we speak of peace, but in our hearts we do not believe it possible. When we look at our world, we see little hope of an end to its troubles. We are sceptical, uncertain, filled with doubts, cautious about expressing any optimism. Even where there are signs of hope, moves towards reconciliation, we know it will take many years before we dare believe it is really possible. But we pray in this Advent season, renew our ability to look forward, rekindle our belief in the future and restore our capacity to hope for better things. Prince of Peace, hear our prayer. Help us as we remember your coming, as we serve you now and as we look forward to your coming again to anticipate your kingdom through the service we offer and the lives we live. Prince of Peace, hear our prayer. Teach us to work for that day when your throne shall be established, your justice prevail and the earth be filled with the knowledge of you as the waters cover the sea. Prince of Peace, hear our prayer. For your name's sake, Amen. So now let us pray together the prayer which Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And before our final prayer and blessing, I'd like to thank you for joining me today. And it would be lovely to see you in person as well. Please do get in touch if there's anything that we can do. And so let us pray our final prayer. O Lord our God, make us watchful and keep us faithful as we await the coming of your Son, our Lord, that when he shall appear, we, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service and joyful in his praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>